Hello students, welcome to EBG Partshala. I am Farhan Jalis Ahmed from Hamdard University and today we are going to discuss on the module Introduction to Pulmonary Drug Delivery System which comes under the paper Novel Drug Delivery System Part 1. Uh, in this module, today we will discuss about the anatomy, physiology of the lungs, different types of barrier which can be faced by a pulmonary delivery and various factors which can affect the performance of a pulmonary drug delivery system. Now, first of all, sh we should understand what is a respiratory system. Respiratory system is a complicated system which serves as gateway for the entrance of therapeutic moieties into the body. Drugs which are given through respiratory system, they are known as pulmonary drug delivery system. With increasing incidence of pulmonary diseases, pulmonary drug delivery has become a very attractive approach for the treatment of pathogenic diseases. The lung is the only organ which is accessible to the entire cardiac output, which is making it a very viable or feasible pulmonary route. Pulmonary route can be used for the treatment of local infections as well as systemic infections. Now, what are the advantages of using it for local infection as well as systemic infection? Like for local delivery, it, we can deliver high concentration of drug to the disease side. It provides reduced side effects. It has a good targeting potential. It offers quick onset of action and due to the local delivery or dosage, the dosage can be reduced. Now when we are using it for systemic delivery, the advantages are the root provides rapid absorption due to large surface area of the pulmonary epithelium. It is a non-invasive system, there is no injection, there is no pain. And then it also bypasses the hepatic first pass effect, especially for those drugs which get converted or get degraded because of hepatic first pass metabolism. So it, it improves the peak plasma concentration. The systemic route has limited access to uh, proteolytic activity. There are no proteolytic enzymes. And therefore, it is extremely suitable for drugs like proteins and peptides. Because these proteins and peptides can be inactivated by the presence of proteolytic enzyme. It also shows reproducible absorption kinetics. Then sustained delivery maintains the drug concentration within the therapeutic window for a prolonged period of time. Instead of because in case of oral system, it is difficult to maintain, but in pulmonary system, it is easy to maintain for a longer period of time. It also reduces the side effects, which are mainly caused by targeted delivery and reduced dosage form. Now the drawbacks which are there associated with pulmonary delivery, there are chances of local side effects due to oropharyngeal deposition. There will be difficulty in using pulmonary devices because from patient to patient, compliance, patient-to-patient -patient variation is there, which makes it no patient non-compliant. Then, limited drug absorption due to the presence of various barriers. Now, as far as anatomy and physiology of lung is concerned, lungs are pair of essential respiratory organs which are present in the most of the mammals. The main function of lung is exchange of gases, uptake of oxygen from the atmosphere, and transfer this oxygen to the blood stream also takes the carbon dioxide from the bloodstream from the body and releases into the atmosphere. They are basically located in the chest of the human which, are, which is where it is protected by a rib cage. Left lung is slightly smaller than the right lung. It, the main uh, purpose is it can accommodate heart. Lungs are soft organs and they are supported by diaphragm which is present at the bottom of the lungs. Now air which basically enters through nose and mouth passes the larynx, pharynx, trachea and reaches the bronchi. The right bronchi further bifurcates into left and right bronchioles which are leading to the respective lungs. The bronchioles further branched into tree-like structure which are known as alveoli, which are very very thin walled sacs where exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. Lungs are basically consist of two parts. One is conducting airways, another is respiratory region. The removal of mucus to the throat is facilitated by cilia, which are hair-like projections or structure which are present on the epithelium. The cilia move in the random fashion and it helps in or it expels the mucus out of the throat into the GIT. Insoluble particles which are larger than 6 micrometer are eliminated by mucociliary clearance, whereas smaller particles, they will bypass the clearance mechanism and reach the alveolar part of the lungs where they will be retained or for longer period of time. Class cells secrete surfactants, which is a mixture of phospholipids and proteins. It contains about 90% of phospholipids and 10% of proteins. 
these surfactants also contribute in the immune response to the pathogens. Now, in case of respiratory region of the lungs, it is basically responsible for the exchange of gases between the alveoli and the blood. It has a very, very thin epithelial lining. The thickness is about 0.05 to 0.08 micrometer and large surface area, about 100 to 200 meter square, facilitating rapid absorption of molecules through this membrane. Respiratory zone constitutes a respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts, and alveolar sacs. The alveolar region is composed of two types of cells. Type 2 cells are responsible for the release of pulmonary surfactant. The surfactant decreases the surface tension in the alveoli to diminish the efforts of breathing and prevents alveoli collapse during expiration. Immediately below the surfactant lies a thick lining fluid through which the drug must diffuse to reach the epithelium. The thickness of this lining basically it is a very very big barrier for the absorption of drugs through this organ. Now let's discuss the mechanism which is involved in the pulmonary delivery. The particles which are inhaled they are deposited in the airways depending upon their size. The principal mechanism which is responsible for the deposition of these particles in the pulmonary region is because of inertial impaction, sedimentation and diffusion. Now larger particles where the size is more than 10 microm it deposited in the upper tracheobronchial regions by the process of inertial impaction. The process depends on the particle momentum. Therefore, particles with higher densities, larger diameter and which are traveling with higher speeds, they tend to deposit by greater impaction. Such particles are cleared from the pulmonary airways by mucociliary clearance system. In the lower region of bronchii, the air velocity is relatively low. So the particles deposit under gravity by the process of sedimentation. However, for this course of action, the diameter of the particles should lie between 2 to 10 micrometer. Further down the respiratory region towards the alveoli, relatively negligible airflow is present. Particles which are much much smaller in size, about 0.5 to 2 micrometer in size, they experience brown in motion in these regions. The particles collide with airway walls resulting in diffusion. In short, smaller particles retain longer in lungs than larger particles. Nevertheless, smaller particles experience phagocytosis by alveolar macrophages. Then dissolution of these particles, subsequently the drug particles which are reaching the lower regions of the respiratory organ, it is accompanied by dissolution. These particles go under dissolution and after dissolution they can get absorbed or retained inside the membrane. The mucus which is present on the epithelium is mainly responsible for the wetting of these particles and after wetting these particles slowly get dissolved in the mucus because the viscosity of the mucus is slightly high so dissolution is slow. Now if you look at this overview of pulmonary absorption, once the particles are inhaled by a person, they get deposited as we have discussed in previous slides also by impaction if the particle size is less than 10, 10 micrometer, by sedimentation if it is between 2 to 10 micrometer or by diffusion if it is between 0.5 to 2 micrometer. After getting deposited on the mucous membrane, it goes into dissolution and depending upon the solubility, after dissolution they get absorbed. Now there are four mechanisms. The mechanism of absorption, it depends on the physicochemical properties of the drug. Hydrophilic particles, their uh, molecular weight is around 600 to 7500 uh, daltons. They absorb through intercellular tight junction by the process of paracellular diffusion. There is lipophilic particles or lipid soluble particles permeate passively through the cell membrane. Larger molecular weight molecules, they are absorbed by transporter mediated process which is also known as active transport. The molecules, they are transported against the concentration gradient with the help of external energy. Active transport is basically of two types or two categories, primary active transports and secondary active transport. Primary transport is also known as direct active transport and it uses cellular metabolic energy for example sodium potassium pump while secondary transport utilizes electrochemical gradient for the conveyance of molecule across the biological membrane. Another mechanism of transport is vesicular transport. It is also known as transcytosis. Transcytosis involves endocytosis and exocytosis which is responsible for the movement of molecules in and out of cells. This mechanism 
is of particular interest for the transport of xenobiotics, proteins, and peptides. These vesicular conducts are found in airways and alveolar region. For example, clathrin, cavulae, flotillin, mediated endocytosis. Let's discuss uh, different types of barriers which are there in the pulmonary delivery, like mechanical barriers. In mechanical barriers, we have the first is cuffing. What is cuffing? Cuffing is an important phenomena for the ejection of foreign matter out of the respiratory system. In healthy individuals, around 8% of the deposited particles, they are cleared by the process of cuffing. Another physical barrier is uh, sneezing. Sneezing is an involuntary me mechanism. It is a defensive mechanism. The par foreign particles, they may irritate the nerves present in the nasal mucosa lining, thus stimulating the sneeze and forces the matter out of the nostrils. Then there is a mucus, there is a thick layer. The fate of the inhaled drug depends on the ability to penetrate through the mucus barrier. Now, owing to the hydrophilic nature of the mucosal lining, penetration of polar molecules is easy, whereas lipophilic drugs are difficult to permeate and penetrate this mucous membrane, and it represents permeated limited absorption. Then there are ciliary cells. These ciliary cells, they propel the mucus out of the lungs in the reverse function, and thus expel the any foreign matter through gastric system. Then there is a pulmonary epithelium. It is a thick layer of epithelium about 5 to 10 micrometer in thickness and it surrounds the lungs rendering absorption of drugs more difficult through lungs. Then there are chemical barriers like surfactants. Surfactants are a combination of phospholipids, proteins which are secreted by ciliary cells. They can modify the solubility of drug and ultimately affect the absorption. Then there are various types of uh, metabolic uh, processes like we have cytochrome P450, which uh, it, it, is, it has a whole family such as uh, CYP1B1, CYP2B6, CYP2E1, CYP2J2, CYP3A5, and CYP1A1. They are expressed in the lungs and they provide defense against the ingested or inhaled foreign substance. Then there are immunological variables like alveolar macrophages. These macrophages they act as a first line of host defense by secreting various types of cytokines and induce phagocytosis. Then uh, the factors like physiological factors, there is a lung morphology. As the uh, tracheobankial tree divides, airways of decreasing diameter and length are generated. Each division results in an increased impaction and a smaller displacement which is required for the particles to con contact a surface. To travel down, the drug particles are required to cross the successive series of constantly diminishing branching tubes. The diameter is constantly reducing. The aerosol particles must constantly alter the direction to remain airborne. Lobes of the lungs, they having shortest average path length, will show highest peripheral deposition. Now, filtration is another uh, uh, phenomena where the conducting regions of the respiratory system is responsible for the filtration of about more than 80% of the inhaled pressurized particles and they, did, uh, they do not get absorbed. Another physiological factor which is basically is thickness of mucous layer. The thickness of lining fluid gradually decreases in the thickness along the respiratory tract from about 5 to 10 micrometer in the conducting airways to about 0.01 to 0.08 micrometer in the alveoli. Consequently, the drug particles will be immersed in the fluid in bronchial region and thus more rapidly dissolved than in comparison to the particles which are depositing in alveoli. Nonetheless, the process of dissolution is dependent on several other factors as well. It also depends upon the solubility of particles, it also depends upon the particle size, it also depends upon the presence of other surfactants or any other formulation additive which is being added in the formulation. Now, about pulmonary surfactants, which are also present there in the lungs. Basically, clara cells, which are present on the epithelial lining, releases these surfactants, which affect the solubility of the drug molecules. Larger macromolecules, such as proteins and peptides, they may undergo aggregation when come in contact with the pulmonary surfactants, and thus it will compromise the dissolution of these agents, and also enhances the macrophage uptake. So it will affect their bioavailability. On the other hand, surfactant promotes the dissolution of smaller lipophilic molecules. 
So for those molecules, these surfactants, they help in the absorption, while for larger molecules, they diminish the absorption. Another physiological factor is pH of the microenvironment. Microenvironment means the environment which is encapsulating the drug molecule. So it is surrounded by the mucus. So drug absorption basically is affected by this microenvironment and it is very sensitive to pH changes in the extracellular environment. If a drug solubility is pH dependent, in that case it will uh, definitely it's going to affect the drug absorption because before absorption the drug has to come into solution and if it is not coming into solution its absorption will be slow. Now different transport mechanism, the type of transport mechanism, it affects the rate and extent of absorption. Certain larger molecules tend to absorb faster due to receptor mediated transport mechanism like albumin while certain molecules they tend to absorb slowly because of the presence of surfactants. Then transport mediated absorption affects the resistance time of the molecules because the drugs which are being absorbed by transport mediated absorption they are immediate they are quickly absorbed as compared to those drugs which are not absorbed by this mechanism. So when they are absorbed quickly the resistance times in the lungs is slow or is low while if they are absorbed slowly the resistance times in the lung is high. So it affects the especially therapeutic efficacy of those drugs which are used for local action. Other uh, physiological phenomena is surface area of the lungs. The large surface area of the alveoli it allows better absorption of drugs through the alveoli region while other regions the absorption is much much less as compared to alveoli region because in the alveoli region surface area is very, is very large and thickness of the membrane is also very less. Then presence of mucin is also affects the absorption in the alveoli region. Other factor is tidal volume. Tidal volume is the volume of air which is inhaled by a person in one breath. An increased inspiratory flow rate which is known as IFR is usually associated with the increased tidal volume. An increased tidal volume results in the penetration and deposition of the aerosol particles deeper into the tracheal, bronchial or alveolar region. So if tidal volume is large, it means uh, the person is deeply breathing. In that case, that the particles will reach the alveoli and if they are reaching the alveoli, absorption will be fast and more. Another factor which is also important is flow of blood. The rate of blood flow, it affects the diffusion of drug molecules from the alveoli to the systemic circulation. Rapid blood flow permits rapid absorption and it is because of the enhanced clearance. The disease state of the lungs also affects the absorption of drugs. The pH of epithelium lining fluid in healthy individual is around 6.6. .6. The disease can change the pH which ultimately affects the rate of absorption. For example, the pH reduces in case of if person is suffering from asthma. The pathological condition also alters the composition, viscosity, volume and clearance or rate of mucus. So when composition, viscosity, volume and clearance is changing, it is bound to affect the dissolution of drug particles and eventually absorption of drug particles from uh, lungs. Bronchial obstruction in various pulmonary diseases, it may result in higher local airflow and turbulence causing localized deposition in the larger airways. Because in case of obstruction, the air is not smoothly flowing through the bronchioles and because of disturbed flow of air, the particles tend to collide with the uh, walls of larger airways and there it is getting uh, entrapped or deposited. So they will never reach the alveoli. So if they are not reaching the alveoli, they are not going to be absorbed immediately. The bronchial constriction also affects the inhalation and exhalation pattern which results in greater deposition by sedimentation. So if it is taking by sedimentation, it will also going to affect the penetration, permeation and absorption of particles through lung mucosa. Alveolar macrophages is a part of natural defense mechanism constituting the cellular immune response. It engulfs foreign particles and releases various pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines to ward off the threats. The breathing pattern varies from individual to individual. Intersubject variations in breathing patterns, it affects the particle deposition in the lungs. In addition, increasing the time interval between inspiration and exhalation augments the sedimentation of particles. With respect to age also, the process of aging induces physiological changes in lung parenchyma. For example, decrease in alveolar surface area, a smaller effective drug volume, which may result in diminished or reduced absorption.
In physicochemical factors, we have lipid solubility, lipophilic drugs are dissolution rate limited, whereas hydrophilic drugs are permeability rate limited. Then PKA. PKA basically affects the solubility of the weak acidic or basic drug. Then particle size, which is very, very important factor. Larger particle size are not be able to penetrate the lungs, whereas the ultra-fine particles, they remain suspended in the air and when we exhale, they come out from the lungs. The optimal particle size for good lung delivery should be between 1 to 3 micron. Then monodispersed particles, they are generally preferred in the formulation as varying the sizes can affect the deposition, aerosolization of the particles. Then shape. The shape of the particles affect the aerodynamic behavior of the particles and it determines the fate of their deposition in the alveolar or tracheobranchial region. Non-spheroidal particles have at least one physical dimension greater than the uh, aerodynamic diameter. The elongated particles which are needle shaped, they result in the deposition in smaller airways. Then environmental fibers of about 50 micrometer in size length, they can reach the alveolar region due to their ability to align with the inspired airflow. And these particles, they impact in the airways by interception with the airway walls. Then density of the particles. Density of the particles, it affects the rate of sedimentation inside the airways. Uh, other factor is electrical charge. Because these smaller particles, they are highly electrical charge. They have electrostatic forces. These electrostatic charge, they generate surface potential differences and promote cohesion. Increasing cohesion decreases the flowability of the particles. Amongst uh, physiochemical factors, hygroscopic is another factor because hygroscopic particles they easily penetrate the mucus lining because of their hydrophilic nature and are ready for absorption. While in contrast to high levels of relative humidity may increase the particle size by hygroscopic growth which may also affect the deposition mechanism. Then the surface roughness of the particle, surface roughness determines the flowability and hence deposition in the lungs. Increase roughness reduces the cohesion between the particles due to less or low contact surface area. Also, uneven particles or particles with rough surface, it results in the increased fine particle fraction, which is known as FPF, and reduced loss by impaction in the throat as compared to smooth particles. Studies have found or have shown that FPF increases with increased surface roughness and reduced cohesion force. So when cohesion force is reduced and FPF is increased, it will basically affect the drug absorption through the lungs. The solid state characteristic of the particles as solubility and rate of dissolution, it is also dependent on the crystalline state and salt type of drugs, whether drugs are crystalline or amorphous in a state, what type of salt is basically is being given to the patient. Thermodynamically stable amorphous particles, they tend to be more soluble than high order crystalline counterparts. So if it is going to affect the solubility, obviously it is going to affect the dissolution and when dissolution is affected, absorption will be much, much, much slow against those particles which are fast dissolving, amorphous in nature and they will dissolve fast and absorb fast. Different salt forms of drugs not only affect the solubility but also permeability across the epithelial layer. So those salts which are soluble in water or which have where aqueous solubility is higher, they are going to dissolve rapidly in the mucus uh, layer and then they get easily permeated, absorbed and availability will be good. While those particles which are hydro or lipophilic in nature, their solubility will be limited and their absorption will also be limited. Now in this slides, you can see the drugs which are approved by US FDA for the use in uh, pulmonary delivery in the last three years. Like uh, drugs that are approved in 2015, we have uh, Obdivo, which was uh, which is containing nivolumab and it is developed by Bristol Myers Squibb it is being marketed for the treatment of metastatic squamous non-small cell lung cancer. Then there is a product known as Orcambi, which is Lumacaftor and Evacaftor. It is marketed by Vertex Pharmaceuticals for the treatment of cystic fibrosis. Then there is Stealto Raspimat, which was containing Teotropium bromide and Olodetrol. It is developed by Borenger Englund for the maintenance of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Then there is Utibron Neohaler, which is containing intercetrol and 
glycopyrrolate and this is developed by Novartis and was promoted for the long treatment uh, and maintenance of airflow obstruction in patients with uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. In 2014, if you see the drugs which are being approved by US FDA, they are MUT Elipta, which is containing Futigazone uh, furate inhalation powder, and it is developed by uh, GSK for the treatment of asthma. Then there is Asberite, which is uh, pyrifenidone. It is developed by Intermune for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Then there is Grastec, which is containing Timothy grass pollen allergen extract, and this is marketed by Merck for the treatment of grass pollen induced allergic peritonitis. Then there is Incruz Elipta, which contains Emi Clignium alienation powder, and it is marked, developed by GSK for the treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Then there is Ophiv, which contains Nintetinib, and it is uh, developed by Boringer Engelim for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Then there is Oral Lear, which is sweet, vernal, orchard, tyrannial rye, Timothy, and Kentucky Bluegrass Mixed Pollen Allergen Extract. And this is uh, developed by Green Labs for the treatment of grass pollen induced allergic rhinitis with or without conjunctivitis. Then there is Ragmatic, which is short ragweed pollen allergen extract. And this is uh, marketed by Merck for the treatment of short ragweed pollen induced allergic rhinitis. Then there is Strivody uh, Respimate, which contains Olodetrol. And it is developed by Boranger and Anglerim for the treatment of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Then there is Zicadia, which contains uh, Seritinib. This is developed by Novartis for the treatment of ALK metastatic non small cell lung cancer. Then in 2013, we have seen about four or five drugs which are being approved for the same treatment, like Adimpas, which contains a Rio Secret. And this is developed by Bayer. Healthcare pharmaceuticals for the treatment of chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary arterial hypertension. Then, Anorora Elipta, which contains Yumi Clidinium and Valenterol inhalation powder, which is given by uh, GSK for the maintenance treatment of chronic obstructive disease. Then, Opsumit, which contains Macitentin, it is marketed by Estilion pharmaceuticals for the treatment of pulmonary arterial hypertension. Then Vibative, which contains Telavancin, and it is uh, developed by Thiravans for the treatment of hospital acquired and ventilator associated bacterial pneumonia caused by Staph aureus, and this was approved in June 2013. Now, the various formulation factors which affects the performance of uh, pulmonary drug delivery, like excipients. The addition of an excipients can enhance the or delay the absorption. For example, catosan, disodium EDTA, sodium caprate, they enhances the absorption of particles through pulmonary epithelium. Like glycerol and PVA, they delay the absorption. Then there are combination therapies, like combination therapies, they are generally preferred to avoid emergence of resistance or for better therapeutic potential. However, the combination should be carefully selected keeping in mind antagonistic or synergistic activity of those selected mo molecules. Antagonistic effect can lead to reduced therapeutic outcome like NSIDs and salbutamol. They both affect the absorption. Synergistic effect can lead to increased drug toxicity, for example, ciprofloxacin and doxycycline hydrochloride. Now, the type of formulation also affect the delivery. Drugs which are given as a solution will be relatively available for the absorption while particulate drug delivery system they have to first undergo dissolution and then they will get absorbed. Then the velocity of the aerosol uh, because it affects the transport of aerosol particles which is produced by nebulizers and dry powder inhalers is associated with the entrainment of the inspired air. Velocity is governed by the inspiratory movement and physiology of the lungs. However, in case of beta dose inhalers the velocity of air droplet is higher than the inspiration rate, which thus results in higher impaction in the oropharyngeal region. In this module, students, what we have learned? We have learned about the uh, anatomy and physiology of lungs. We have learned about different barriers which can 
encountered by the pulmonary debris inside the lungs. And we have also discussed about various types of factors like physiological factors, physical factors, anatomical factors and formulation types which can affect the pulmonary drug delivery. Thank you.